Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, June 16th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida and still teaching virtually in Paris, France. Of course, vulnerabilities in perimeter security devices are all the rage these days, so no real big surprise that we also have some botnets jump on the bandwagon. Have observed uh, the Mirai botnet, at least one version that uh, is associated with some of the original Mirai code using a relatively a recent kind of sonic wall vulnerability for the last couple of days in order to look for or new victims. The vulnerability here, well, is not new in the sense that it is a shell shock. Shell shock, of course, has been around since 2014. SonicWall has released updates in 2015 with firmware SMA 8004, but apparently there are devices that were left out or not patched and that sort of became news again a couple months ago with the rediscovery of these flaws. We now have uh, this particular version of Mirai scanning for this vulnerability. This particular version has a number of other sort of tricks up its sleeve and it seems to be going sort of for, for example, for dealing uh, firewalls as well, also for Cisco Hyperflex. It does have an exploit that uh, we observed uh, scanning for a Ruby WebRig uh, vulnerability. In addition to a number of additional vulnerabilities that it's scanning for based on the data from the binary that it's uh, downloading, but uh, actually observed uh, in our log uh, we only saw a couple of these uh, vulnerabilities. So some of them may only uh, get scanned for if the server does provide a specific response. Other than that, uh, really just you no know, Mirai as usual. It first downloads a little shell file that will then download a number of binaries for different architectures and run them and basically see what sticks, see what runs, and that will then be continuing the scan. As far as defenses go for this particular botnet, don't really worry about it. Uh, you either are vulnerable and have been exploited a long time ago, or you are already patched. And then we got some interesting new open source software from uh, Google, and that's a homomorphic encryption library, or actually more accurately, a transpiler for homomorphic encryption. The neat thing about homomorphic encryption, which sort of has become more and more popular the last few years with more and more cloud computing, is that you're able to perform operations on encrypted data without first having to decrypt it. Uh, traditionally, of course, if you have encrypted data, you first decrypt it and then you add, multiply, or do whatever uh, with it, and then you re-encrypt it. But while the data is decrypted, of course, in particular in cloud environments, it may remain accessible. And as a result, uh, it could leak. But with homomorphic encryption, you are not actually going to decrypt the data at all, which is uh, sort of an amazing property of these algorithms. They're, of course, not really easy to implement. So it's really nice for Google to offer this transpiler. A transpiler itself allows you to write code the way you used to write it. So you basically just create a code that does whatever string operations or mathematical operations you want to perform. And by running it through the transpiler, you then are automatically basically adopting these operations to these homomorphic encryption algorithms and are able now to act on encrypted data. So in particular, if you're thinking about a processing uh confidential data in shared computing environments. Uh, this is certainly something that you may want to take a look at and play around a little bit to see if it applies uh, to you. Haven't really looked at sort of what the overhead and such is of these particular uh, libraries, but uh, some of the improvements uh, in recent years in these encryption algorithms have been actually pretty amazing and it has actually become sort of somewhat feasible uh, to run these algorithms. 
And Tenable has an interesting blog post detailing a flaw that Tenable found in Microsoft Teams that may allow an attacker to gain access to confidential information in a Microsoft Teams environment. Root cause here appears to be an interesting flaw that I've seen before in web applications and such. And the problem is how a trusted domain is validated. In this particular case, on the beginning of the URL was validated. So if I'm trusting sans.edu, it would just check if the hostname starts with sans.edu. So it would also trust sans.edu.evilexample.com. Um, and that made it possible uh, to run malicious code inside a team uh, from an untrusted domain. And nothing you have to do to fix this. Microsoft already took care of it for you. And since it's running in Microsoft's cloud, there is no code that you need to fix. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.